Oh my, it's Kelly White. Hey, it's James Van Pog. What are you up to? Thinking about changing the world. Me too. We should do a show together. What would it be about? Let me show you. Show. Oh, hi, I'm bird watching. Sorry. <laughs> That's right. I'm picking corn back here. So <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't in my office. It was they were sitting here. They gotta do that before. <laughs> hi Kelly. Hi, James. Oh I my miss gosh. You already. You, I'm... You missed, that, that was the fastest trip on earth, really. Fastest trip on earth, but it was so heavenly. We had the best time. We were together. We were with your friend Marianne, who is now my new friend, who is just wonderful. We had a, just a great dream time. And then the party. And let me just tell everybody about your gardens because they they oh, yeah. haven't had the opportunity to see your gardens. They've heard you talk about them. But everybody, I'm going to tell you what. These gardens are fantastic. There was a moon garden. Let me see if I can get them all. The Hawaiian <laughs> garden. Which well, was, they were all one. amazing. Yeah. Oh, the picking garden, the cutting Shade garden, garden, picking garden the vegetable garden. garden. It was unbelievable. It was just, Parad don't forget Paradise Park. Oh, Paradise Park. Okay, let me just yeah, say this. It was phenomenal. I, I, the plants and the, the way everything is done and Thanks, the Jim. energy, the energy. I mean, it was phenomenal. A lot phenomenal. of people commented on the energy. But, I mean, they didn't know what I did. And they said, well, the energy here is great. And, well, and your friend Shirley. Well, Shirley. Shirley. Okay. She goes, Hi, I can't go any further. Uh, the, well, the she was like, walking in and she said, Look at this energy, it's amazing. No, it was it was really phenomenal. What a great party, too. It was so much fun. Party. It really, really great was. Time. Yeah, it was really fun. It was great to be with you and be with other people. And I kind of <laughs> like um I like being together with people, but I kind of like a smaller, more intimate type of situation. I'm used to that yeah. now with COVID and all that. Yeah, that's true. But I thought everybody that was there was incredible. It was fun. But I had I had to, you know, close the house down and we're going oh, down the stairs. Oh, I remember. <laughs> Was well, it was. Yeah, we stayed up late too. <laughs> we, we did, didn't we? Uh, <laughs> I would just let, let everybody know we have two very special people on the show tonight, and they've been on the show before. Um, and um, uh, Kelly and Kevin Russell, and Kelly is my yoga instructor, who's incredibly extraordinaire. And yeah. Kevin is her lovely gentleman. Where they explain, they explain to you what they do. But uh, in the field of, I guess Kelly, you'd know more about this than I would in therapy and relationship therapy. But I wouldn't put this in that category because it's a relationship. No. But they'll tell us. But I, they are two very different people, two very star seeds. Mm -hmm. um, and Denavia, who you know, my good friend Denavia, yeah. who great friend of mine. She's so, so beautiful. Yeah. She looked at Kelly and she said, "That's an angel." I said, "I know." Oh yeah, for sure, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yeah. And oh Kevin is in his own little orbit, I got to say, really. Oh, my so gosh. So it's nice to about relationships and some very interesting insights for everybody. So should yes. we? Invite, oh, and first of all, wait, Kelly, you want to tell us about our, uh, uh, do we have to? Right. I just want to say a astrology. couple of things. I just want to yeah, say a couple of things, things about things astrology. Yes, because because during your show today, a lot of people were anxious and a lot of people were had a lot of questions about it. So I just want to say a couple minutes here. Of, I'm writing it down. Yep. We have five planets in retrograde still. The five planets, the big ones, Jupiter's in retrograde, Saturn's in retrograde, Pluto's in retrograde, Neptune's in retrograde, and Uranus is in, in retrograde. And those are big planets. On September 27th, Mercury joins them and goes retrograde oh, in Libra. So then we'll have six. But what I do want to say, and I know we have a lot of big things going on with oh, Ida, Hurricane Ida. That's huge. Yeah. Afghanistan, that's huge. So a couple of big things that I do want to say that Pluto in retrograde always uh, is about, um, It's they call it, they don't call it the planet of destruction for no reason. So it knocks things down. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah. And then Uranus is, means radical change. Now, isn't it interesting? We have Kelly and Kevin on tonight for radical relationship change, right? So it actually means radical change. So this is what we're doing. Now, the other thing I wanted to address is that Chiron, the wounded healer, is also retrograde. Now, that is a comet. And that comet sits between Saturn and Uranus. And when and it's in Aries. So Aries means what about me? It's about me. And so it, when you, uh, when Chiron is retrograde, it's about 
going into yourself and doing the work on yourself, looking at your traumas, looking at your wounds, looking at everything. And that causes anxiety. So when people were asking you today, what caught, why am I so anxious? These planets are in big areas causing a lot of destruction, change, and, and anxiety. But here's what we're I forced to, we're forced to look into ourselves. We're, we're forced, forced to look into it. So right. interesting enough, on uh, September 6th, so on Labor Day, September 6th, Labor Day in the United States, uh, that is when we have a new moon in Virgo. And Virgo is about health, this and oh self-awareness. Now, this, this new moon is very interesting because it's next to the fixed star Coxa, C-O-X-A, which means hip. Now, what's so interesting about that fixed star is that star is about psychic ability and prophecy. Now, if we take the month of September and we go back, September's when you go to school to learn, right? Right. So this would be for all those people that are have psychic interests, that mediumship, um, they want to learn about being healers, especially with um, that uh, Aries, uh, Chiron and Aries retrograde. This is the best time to take classes in September. This is the time to do it. So I know, James, you have all those amazing classes at your school. You know, Kelly, we do have usually, and this year we will because of all this. And I might ask you to give me a little bit to put on that notice um, that we have back to school sales. So um, yeah. we'll, we'll be doing that. Yes, for sure. I think I that's a really great idea because September is when you go back to, you know, to school and and it's and then on September 14th we have a really interesting situation too because the sun is in Virgo and it's opposing Neptune so the sun shines things up it it brightens things it makes you become aware of things Neptune wants to go to sleep Neptune wants to stay in its dreamy place that and time is it Kelly is it in Taurus it's actually in Pisces it's in Pisces yeah so it's yeah. going to be exactly and it's going to be like kind of a tougher time. And I think the last two weeks in September are going to be a little more, as we say, would say, I'm going to say it radical, but I'm going to tell you what it's all about. It's all about, it means this. It's not about who am I? It's about who am I becoming? Who oh, am I becoming? Wow. Wow. And so this is what, remember, if we use the lens of our soul lens of why we incarnate, we are here to grow. Well, we're in a growth period. Let's say that. So, Kelly, can I just uh, advise something? You tell me what you think. Uh, everyone that's listening to this or watching this right now, because of that movement that we've got to find out who you are, take out a piece of paper, a pad, and a pen, and write down who you want to be. Yes. Right? So in five years, you are that person. Absolutely. That's right. absolutely right. This is the time to do it. This is the time. And if you have a lot of traumas to work on, you can absolutely take our class, Roots of Healing Part 2. That's on September 25th. And we are, we're offering 15% on that. And that's all about generational um, uh, programming, the things that you would have come in with patterns. your ancestors, patterns. Oh. It's going to be an extraordinary class. And you do not have to have taken part one to take it. But this is September's the great time for learning who am I becoming? Who am I? And who am I becoming? And, and one more thing, because people are freaking out, I'm sure, when they hear this. So um, how do they handle what, what do you? What's your... Uh, idea about how they can handle all these oh, retrogrades right now i'm going to tell they, you right they, i'll tell you great question guided meditations if you don't know how to meditate do a guided meditation and i know on your site james you have a lot of ones to choose from a guided meditation it wow. gets you in that zone of of calming yourself and learning who your higher self is and it's, it centers you and centers um, our guest you. tonight, Ke uh, Kelly, mm -hmm. is um, one of the best meditators. Actually, we're doing a show together, her and I, we're going to do a, a soul care because her meditations is the best I've ever experienced. I mean, oh, like my gosh. Kelly is just great. And wow. there are insights I've never experienced before. And I'm old. So I was like, wow, Kelly, we're going to do a show together. So we're going to so. Yeah, I, I think um, what's helped me a lot, Kelly, like we talked about when you were here, surrender. Oh, just surrender. surrender. You know, um, I can't get all done at once. You know, I'm gonna be late for an appointment. I, I can't help that. I'm just, it is what it is. It's all that it is. <laughs> it is. It's such a waste of energy when you worry about these things. It is what it is. That's all you can do is your best. And that's it. Don't but isn't that growth for you to get to that point? Yes. yes. <laughs> it took a long time, but yes. Well, I hear you. I hear you, brother. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm excited about these two guys. Anything <laughs> else? Kelly, no, that's it. I'm done. 
And you have their introduction you would like to read to people? Or Actually, I don't have it. No, good. Let, let's, let's let them talk about themselves. Because I, think I think it's think a great idea. One. So please, everybody, please welcome um, Kevin and Kelly Russell. Yay. Yay. Hi. The adorable couple, I like to say. So true. <laughs> it was so great to get to meet you last week in James. It was you wonderful. You too. In real life. In real life. I know. So yeah. special. Yeah. We got so, to dance. We got to boogie. That was fun. I have pictures of you guys dancing. <laughs> yeah. So tell you us. Guys, you've been on separately. So how can you describe, yes. I guess, your, your individual and together, yeah. how do you work with relationships and so forth? Now, what's your background? <laughs> yeah. yeah. For me, I started out in marriage and family therapy. I, I did not get licensed. I got my master's and decided I wanted to go into yoga and meditation. Did that for about a decade. And then we'll actually talk about mm. one of the precipitating factors that got us into this work was our relationship, our daughter. Yeah. Um, but I ended up going into psyche and emotion code therapy. So it's psychological kinesiology and emotional energy healing. Then I'll let Kevin explain more about what he does. I don't know, James. <laughs> what do I do? You were a designer, right? An architectural designer at one point. I was, I was in the UI UX uh, interactive design field for about 20 years. And the universe had other ideas for me. And um, I took the accumulation of everything I've been interested in throughout my life, and it really distilled down into a massive uh, enlightenment experience, is the only way I can describe it. Um, a lot of the natural talents, the natural capacity that every one of us have really um, started to uh, increase and accelerate. So intuition, clairvoyance, clairessence, clairaudience, um, working with energy that has uh, transitioned from this life, working with non-corporeal energy, working with clients that are having issues with themselves, issues with family. Um, it's really, my approach is looking at everything from the energetic level, and that's where really the, the, the root of, of everything. And Kevin, let me interrupt you by asking, last time I think you were on, you described your wake up. Was that your mm -hmm. Kundalini rising? Is that what you described that, or was it, was it different? Or is it near-death experience? No, um, yeah, not a near-death experience. I mean, the, the actual experience was like a supernova going off in my head. Supernova going off in my head. Yeah. Great, great so I'm not sure if, I'm not sure where that would fall on the, on the spectrum of, of your yeah. higher self just saying hi. Yes. Yeah, it was literally like, oh, by the way, I'm here and you're up. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I help people with energy transformation. Um, uh, I, I have, in, I get insight, I get uh, downloads, I get knowings in sessions, sometimes not. Um, new tools, new approaches, uh, new uh, frameworks for addressing and qualifying and quantifying energy to be able to work with it more efficiently. Um, and yeah, so uh, energy technician, energy janitor, um, and how do you intuitive. Put together? How do you put your gifts together and your skill set, I should say, and, and together and meld? Yeah, I think what we've come to understand and people that have worked with both of us, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a great uh, crossover between those that might be used to a talk therapy that are just starting to get into this world, uh, getting into the subconscious, getting into more of the spiritual healing modalities. And then Kevin is kind of like a deep excavator. He goes uh, um, far into other realms where it's people that have uh, tethers to other family members that have passed on, uh, sometimes those that are experiencing what we might term dark energy or uh, they're having problems in their life that um, it, it's just, gosh, it's hard to, it's almost like, I, like I'm the little baby step. And then when people are ready for some massive transformation, and they are not afraid to speak the language of mm. the spiritual world as well as energy work. They go right to Kevin. And, so and I got like right quantum advanced. with you, Kevin. I don't know this yeah. came to my head. Quantum came into my head for you. Yes. Yeah. And that was so, and I, Kelly's being very generous, but not to discount her work because it is as transformative, mm -hmm. it, is, it is as impactful. Um, I like to just say Kelly goes in with a scalpel and I go in with an excavator. <laughs> it's really kind of the, <laughs> Actually, the somebody in here is calling you an energy janitor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's like right. I, I'm energy technician, energy janitor. You yeah. know, it's just, we it's played with terms like that, a detective. Yeah. It's like just figuring out what's going on, what's causing that, transforming yeah. that energy into something better and different. Um, but it Probably really a lot is. Of Scorpio in your chart. Probably a lot of Scorpio, right? I think I, okay. I do. Kevin has a lot of Virgo and uh, I have, yeah, I have, I have to look. I have the Scorpio rising and a Taurus moon myself. 
Yeah. And wow. James, their birthdays are t next mm -hmm. to each other and then mine. It's like one, yeah. two, three. September 16th, September 17th, and? 20th. Yeah, we're all Virgos yeah. here. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> But the James, to your point, the the quantum is my was my entry point that really coalesced science, philosophy, theology, spirituality, new age, self help, and really unified everything. And that's the approach I take. It's a it's a holistic, unified energy approach to to whatever's going on. So it could be, um, oh, there's a chakra imbalance, and that's one aspect of energy transformation that I facilitate. Uh, it's just one component of our energetic makeup, of our okay. um, energetic framework. We'll check meridian system, adrenals, energy connections, energy bodies, body, mind, spirit connections, uh, connection to source. You know all these polarity on the quantum field. So, yeah. We we I help people real realign with or uh, get to a more positive polarity if they've been knocked off. Uh, you know of that aspect. And that would yep. be working with people who have been very negative. And or, trauma, traumatic, or trauma, or yeah, it it all. It, so my my only, I've, I've, it's a real low bar for for uh, you know, it's not a huge entry point for working uh, with me specifically. I only ask that one, you have to be ready for change. Like if you're not ready for change, the resistance in the in your system is going to work counter to whatever we do. So, so the the desire for change uh, and the the openness and willingness to change and shift whatever whatever is whatever arises. And then also be open to be open to the work, be open to the approach to whole system wellness is that it, we're coming at it from the energetic aspect. So it might not, be, sometimes it's invisible right away. Sometimes it is a quantum shift in the session. Um, I've had people uh, that are kind of at that place where they've maybe been knocking at a door for, for a little bit. And then there's a configuration that I help with that just helps them open to it and they're open it. And they're like, the, all the colors just got more, Colorful. Everything got. More, I, I feel more peaceful. I feel more balanced, and I am able. It's just my vision just shifted. And it's not for everyone, but that's kind of one of those examples of somebody who's been doing the work. They're on their own journey, and it's just you know we we slipstream together and, and walk shoulder to shoulder, and it is a true collaboration as well. Yeah. Um, I think for both of us because well, I, I've had had both of your sessions, so I agree with that's why you're here because I was yeah. blown away. But <laughs> I've had a lot of energy sessions with different people yeah. over the years, and you're the two best I've ever experienced together. So that's why you're here to share. And it's it, it's the it's the um op, not openness. What was it? I just lost it. Thank you. That was very kind. <laughs> but there's no. I know you're talking about. We said the first party. We had that same thing. What worked? Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. I have a question here from Kim Ann Snodgrass. She says, mm. "What is the difference with a meridian and a chakra?" Meridian system is the energy body. So this would be more a Chinese medicine approach. We have thousands of mer meridians that run through the the body, the system that connect to organs. So checking to see that those are in balance and chakra system. Kevin works with the 10, 12. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm familiar wor with working with seven, but yeah. you work with a few more than I do. So yeah. I, I, one of the entry points that I come to most things with is looking through the lens of uh, a scientific postulate called Occam's razor, which is the simplest answer is usually the right answer. So I always look for a re an exercise in reduction. I want to reduce the, the labels. I want to reduce the variety. So for me, the 12 primary chakras are meridians. So chakra meridian for me in that regard is interchangeable. There are additional Chinese meridians that have different points throughout the body. Um, and so the same way as I had a conversation with someone recently and they were, they were looking at, well, what's the difference between the subconscious and the unconscious? And for me, this, everything that we experience bodily, except for our heart space, our, our quantum love engine, and our conscious mind is the subconscious mind body. Maybe I can use that to switch us into how we came to this like relationship yeah. work. Yeah. Wait, wait, we gotta, we yeah. gotta have a question about the three of these 12 chakras. I mean, that's seven mm. of them. What's eight, mm -hmm. nine, 10, 11, 12? So once we get above the crown, um, yeah. and actually 10, uh, is a little bit out of order. Ten is actually a grounding chakra. Um, the twelve, pro the I believe it's uh, universal consciousness. There is an electromagnetic field, so that's twelve and eleven. And I could be getting these labeled wrong. So if anybody, um, I've I've got them listed, and I don't necessarily go into detail. I just look. This is the thing. Is it balanced? Is it over energized or under energized? Um, so twelve, eleven, nine, 
is uh, I'm completely blanking, and I do apologize. You have any anyway, workshop, Kevin? It's okay. There you go. Exactly. Thank you, James. So it's twelve, eleven, nine, eight that are kind of in the field, but you know, above the crown. Above the crown. And then we've got seven, six, five. Heart is four. Solar okay. plexus. That's a really dumb question. Not really dumb. No, 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 no such no. thing. Um, so, so in your work, in you guys' work, um, and I know you have the workshop coming in September, September twelfth, correct? Uh, the seventeenth. Seventeenth. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, seventeenth, which is perfect, Kelly. It's astrologically, we just talked about changes. You said that. Mm -hmm. It's perfect. Um, what are you going to cover in that in that workshop, please? Mm -hmm. We want to know. So well, yeah, we wanted to talk tonight yeah. about three of those because it's okay. we, we focus on the radicals, radical energy, radical balance, radical acceptance, radical honesty, radical freedom, radical responsibility. But there are three really important ones to relationships. And the first one that I think is is really big is just radical acceptance. And and what what we see a lot with people is when they're in an argument, whether it's a a, a child and a parent whether it's two siblings, whether it's a, a romantic relationship, often we see people that are like this, like, why can't you be more like me is the underlying <laughs> issue, you know? And, yeah, and yeah. number one is just accepting the difference. Like I was talking to Kevin uh, bef before we started today and like, I'm one of these people that I, I like to say something, like if we go to a restaurant and the steak is cooked incorrectly, I'll say, waiter, <laughs> I asked for medium rare. This is well done. Could you please bring another? Whereas Kevin's like, I, I don't want to say anything. You know, I, yeah. I don't really want to rock the boat. No big deal. I'll eat it. No big deal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or if AT and T raises our bill fifty dollars, I'll I'll say, well, this is outrageous. Someone must do something about this. And Kevin's like, whatever. It'll work itself out. And and before it used to bother me. I would say, uh, why why don't you be more? Mm. You know. Uh, why don't you take charge yeah, more? Take why, charge. why doesn't this bother you? Like, what, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> and, and um, you know, there were times where I was like, why don't you stand up for this or stand up for that? And, and we, after doing a lot of this transformative work, I realized I'm really good at this. I really like doing this. It doesn't bother me at all. I'm that type of personality. Whereas Kevin really helps me. Like in the past when I've worked for an employer and maybe something went away that I didn't like it and I'd compose an email <laughs> and Kevin would read over my shoulder and say, maybe could we soften that up a little bit? And then after reading it, I'd say, you're absolutely right. Like this is just going to shut people down rather than open people up. And he'd help me change a couple words and it would be much more palatable and beautiful. So instead we learn how to communicate more like this or to just honor each other's differences. Like where, where you have these certain strengths, I'm strong over here and you're stronger over here. So instead of saying, well, why can't you do it the way I do it? Why can't you be like me? We learn to adjust that, and it changed. Yeah. They everything. enhance each other. They really enhance each other. It is. The, I know. The really interesting yeah. thing is part of that. My interpreted that as just creating space with with Kelly, kind of releasing that need or releasing whatever it was to have me be away. There was more space for me to actually be that way. So as we were, as, as we, you know, this that was the starting point. Where it's like, you know, we were right there. Like, why can't you be more like me? Yeah. Friction and resistance. And then as we started to uh, really excise a lot of our conditioning and programming and stuff from mom and dad and stuff that we accumulated in this lifetime, coming back more to our wholeness, back more to our, our true self, our center, and having, having a clearer view and understanding and feeling of what that actually is, I started to feel more confident. I started to be more comfortable in my skin and, and standing up for certain things that I would have just you know, let go uh, before. And it's a, it's a very interesting evolution where almost the, the, the release is the accelerator. But so often we don't recognize that that's an option because we're either in resistance or in attachment to something. And the more in resistance or in attachment we are to anything, the more that that thing's gonna be sticking to, to in or, and or around us. And we harbor we harbor resentments towards people mm. like um, my father. He was he was this guy that worked nine to five. He'd come home and throw the ball for our dog for a while, and then mom would make dinner. We'd have dinner together, but he'd eat just 
twice as quick as my mom and I, and he'd leave the table, go into the bedroom and watch sports on TV. And then he'd have another sports team on the radio. And then he'd have the sports page on a, on a newspaper in front of him. And wow. this was my life growing up. Wow. But um, when I was I 18. You don't like sports, Kelly. <laughs> uh, dude, actually, how did you know that? I don't. <laughs> Just figured. Then, right. So my dad, um, he's a real tough guy. But one night he said, you know, I, I, I don't feel right. I think I need to go to the emergency room. And an intern actually looked at his chart and said, there is a little hole in your aorta. And they called in the doctors and they rushed him to surgery. And it changed my dad's life. He started eating well. He started exercising and running. He became a different person. And he eventually became a track coach. And he would we would call each other on the phone all through my 20s and 30s. And he would tell me these inspiring stories of how he's coaching these uh, young men and women in high school and the way that he would give them words of wisdom and how they received him. And they gave him these plaques at the end of the year and wrote messages. You're the most you know, inspirational person in my life. You changed my life. But I started harboring resentment because I thought I needed that dad. Where were um, you when I was a teenager? So I remember being 36 years old and I got enough courage to ask my dad. I, I, I just said, basically, it's really hard to hear these stories sometimes because I wonder where that dad was for me. Wow. And my dad waited about 30 seconds. He was think I could tell it was thinking and really pondering what I said. And he came up with the most beautiful response. He just said, Kelly, I wasn't there yet. Oh. And a, a feeling of relief <laughs> flooded over me. Truly. I, I released all that resentment I was holding on to. And I realized, you're right. You were not that person yet. And I was holding you to that. Wow. So, and, and you wouldn't be able to do the work you're doing now without oh, that experience. Damn. You're right. So I was wondering, what if we could all just give each other a little bit of grace? Like that we can move beyond something we once were and not hold each other in a box where we harbor old past things and allow each other a little bit of space to grow. Right. And what if I could just accept that? Then all that pain went away. So that was huge. And, and what besides acceptance, what also you recover? Yeah, so the next one is honesty. Mm -hmm. honesty. And what we see is a lot of people who are living out of alignment with who they really are. And they do this to pacify family members. It starts with family of origin. Mm -hmm. Like uh, mom and dad wanted me to go into a certain career, go to a certain school, act a certain way, marry a certain person. And then we see people later in life that are married to uh, one another. And uh, we've, we've had a, a client who this man was feeling rather lonely and he wanted to go to church. Mm -hmm. And his wife said, I don't believe in any of that. So you can't go. Um, we have, gosh, what do we, what else do we have? So, oh, I have a, a client who's a yogi who works with crystals and healing and her husband doesn't believe in any of that. And she said, but I feel this yearning. I want to do this healing work. And he said, no, this is not going to work for us. You can't do it. Uh -huh. So what, so what we see is people that end up stuck, stressed, mm -hmm. it eventually turns into pain and illness. It shows up in different ways in the body. Mm -hmm. So it takes radical honesty to stand up for yourself and say, mm -hmm. This is who I need to be. I have this deep calling within me. This is a non-negotiable. I need to do this for my life. Mm -hmm. And I love the way you guys started tonight's show because it was like, what do you want to be? Write it down. Who are you yeah. becoming? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Who are you going to yeah, be? Yeah, Kelly, you and I were talking about this this morning in yoga, um, and it, it really did hit me um, that people don't want to take responsibility oh. for doing their thing, to, to, to yeah. get ready, to do, they just want someone else to do it for them. Right. And you really got to want to do it yourself and do it. Right. And this is where the, the challenge for me comes into the equation, which is applying all of these concepts or practices for ourselves. So radically accepting me exactly where I am, exactly everything I'm carrying with being radically honest with me really holding up that mirror and the challenge is these beautiful bodies that we're in because these to your point I'm, I'm, I'm really am appreciative of uh, be a model is that what you're saying I'm just <laughs> yeah, right. well, I'm really appreciative you mentioned quantum because the the bodies we inhabit are an equivalent to a quantum supercomputer 
And so they, they operate at about 500,000 times the capacity of our conscious mind. And these, pro, these, these bio machines that we are in are programmed for safety, planning, and protection at all cost, regardless of what is going on in the conscious mind. Interesting. Because if our subconscious had its way, our subconscious would have its hand on the wheel at all times. And by the low grade states of fight, flight, freeze, we often find ourselves in. That is actually the configuration that's most often there where our hands aren't even on the wheel. And so we're dropped into very um, defensive or resistant behaviors or expressions almost immediately because we're our systems now, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> collectively. Yeah. 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 So the system's trying to keep us safe. And when we're talking about a communication, both systems are doing the exact same thing, but they're trying to keep their respective, uh, you know, energetic stewards or energetic conveyances, energetic sources safe, regardless of what's happening to the other, even if it is a loving marriage or relationship or, or partnership. And so for me, a big part of this whole practice is really turning that lens to your point, James, about, you know, being open to doing the work, being open to questioning the system questioning maybe I was not actually right. Maybe I could, maybe I was a little bit over the top with my reaction or my words or my tone. And this is the challenge yeah. and the opportunity. Let me, let me, let me interrupt it by saying um, you're very left brain. You're the most left brain person I know. You're very left brain. And for you to leave your career and mm -hmm. do this, and it's the same thing with me as working at Paramount yeah. Studios as yeah. sitcom writer, to do mediumship, not knowing when I was going to get paid, how I was going to get paid. Yeah. Same thing you went through. You had trust. You had complete trust. And I give you everything, like a lot of respect for doing that. It's a hard thing to do, especially left brain people. <laughs> that doesn't make sense, but you have to right. do it in your soul. So, and it's it really is what it and the, there, there's another aspect of discernment there too and kelly and i were talking about this as far as sometimes we get into a mode of speaking our truth or going with what feels like yes that's the right thing um and so there is that layer of of excavation or or clarity as well where am i is my truth really a protection layer like that's, the ego? that's keeping me safe is it an ego reaction a spiritual ego reaction or is it actually, I am, if I'm speaking my truth, it is balanced, it's empathetic, it's accepting, and it's honest. Your true energetic self, like the soulful self, yeah. which part of you are you speaking from? And it's, so James, to your point, it, when, when I, when I had my experience, it almost was like, there, there it was such an internal shift that I was almost re revulsed from going back to just doing design because I had just been kind of, you know, ripped wide open, you know, laid asunder and then put back together with love. And it's like, this is what I'm, this is what you're doing now. And I was like, okay, cool. This is what I'm doing now. And thankfully at this point, Kelly and I had been um, in our process on our journey for three or four ish years by this point. So I had my experience on a Thursday afternoon and at about three, three thirty, I went directly to her office and said, the, I shared what happened and I said, and you know, the whole, the whole spectrum of it. And I said, this is what I have to do now. I can't do anything else. And to Kelly's credit, she took a breath and she said, okay. <laughs> that is does. to your credit, yeah. Kelly. A hundred percent. Kelly yeah. fashion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know I work with her all the time. Yeah. <laughs> So, but, and some people would rather stay safe. They'll say, yeah. well, I will just be with somebody who doesn't like me for who I am just to not rock the boat or just to, to not be alone or just not to go out there in the wild world and see mm -hmm. if I can make it by myself. So I'll stay with somebody who diminishes me, uh, doesn't appreciate me or doesn't even understand or accept the real me. So, you know, I want to help empower people to step into that ownership of who they really are inside, but helping couples accept yeah. one another for who they are. Mm, there's mm -hmm. so much control in relationships. Can you uh, talk about control when you're with somebody who's controlling? Because some boy. people stay because of fear. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, my gosh. You, you know, number one, sa safety has to be met. So we can't even do higher level talking or, or thinking about these ideas until you have a roof over your head, you have food on the table, and your body is physically safe. Or even, I mean, sometimes even the emotional abuse can be worse than the physical abuse. So number one prerequisite is you've got to get safe. And you, if you're in a situation that's harmful, number one, before we'll even talk about this relationship stuff, is to be safe. 
So asking yourself, um, am I in a risky situation? Is my partner taking care of me or is there physical, mental or spiritual, you know, any type of abuse going on and getting you safe? Then we can start talking about this, which is um, letting go of some of those controls. What is it about? I want you to be more like me. And if you're not, I'll control you. Um, also, there's that imbalance. Like that yeah. you, you'll see somebody that might be, we might turn them a narcissist. That might be a person who's ultimately selfish. Who are they going to pair up with? Somebody who is ultimately selfless. Absolutely. Because it's an asymmetrical balance, but it does form a balance. And as that person who is selfless gains self confidence, self esteem, and self worth, it's no longer a good fit. And that's okay. Sometimes relationships need to end. Well, yeah, so see the nice. reason in a lifetime. A quick question. Sorry, Kelly. A uh, quick question. Um, are your workshops, do you find that there are more partners that go or just singles mm -hmm. or people that are with partners at home? What do you find more of? We've had all. We've yeah. had sisters. Uh, yeah. We've had oh, spouses. Yeah. We've had yeah. friends. Yeah. Uh, we've had mothers take it solo. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it could be whoever, and whoever business wants partners. to learn. Business it, can partners. Be, it can be that. We haven't had that yet, but we welcome all. It's like anyone that wants to learn to um, get along with a person mm -hmm. in a way that's more open, accepting, receiving, and we teach communication. And that's, that's the next thing I wanted to talk about is well, conscious before communication. Before you go there, Kelly, before you go there, relationship yeah. with yourself as well. Oh my gosh. That's, that's the main deal. Right. That's the, first that's thing, the main right? thing. And, and that's what, there, there's a healthy dose of that throughout these courses. And so, and we do have two, we've got our relationship course and our living course, radical living, oh, radical good. relationships. Good. So radical living is much more in, intrapersonal. It's very much focused on the self. Radical relationships, is, it takes it through, it through the yourself. self yep. to the relationship intrapersonal or interpersonal relationships. So there's a healthy dose even in the relationship course of, okay, that there's that mirror because the change, change will not happen out here. Change can only happen in here. It's foundation. So, uh, exactly. And, so, and yeah. usually when we're experiencing something, it's because of some reaction that if I'm upset with yeah. him, it's some internal reaction that I'm having. It usually has nothing to do with him. It's how I'm perceiving something that's going, the story that I'm making up in my head. It, Kelly, to your point. In the middle of a workshop, it's like, hold on, I don't feel good. Hold on, I fucking need time. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> so Kelly, to your point about control, if there is, if there is a, a, a relationship between two individuals and control is a factor for one. And it's usually only gonna be one. Usually two people that are very controlling, it's almost like putting the same ends of the magnet together. They're gonna to just right. naturally not gravitate towards each other. If there's control, then a lot of times the individual controlling will not be in recognition that they are controlling. Because all control is, is an external expression of an internal perceived deficit. True. Internal dis-ease. So, the reaction is, I need to control in order to feel safe, in order to feel loved, in order to feel worthy, in order to feel just, in order to, feel, you know, whatever, whatever, fill in the blank, whatever it is. And so a lot, part of the course is really pulling back the lens to get that broader view of, of the complexities and, and opportunities that come with relationships. Because often we're so in it, we're so in those VR goggles yeah. and our system is geared is our systems cheering us on. It's like, Oh yeah, get her or get him. Stay safe. Ooh. Yeah. That was a zinger. Remember that thing that happened 10 years ago? Use that. Cause that'll keep us safe. <laughs> and we're hardwired for it. And so the, this is really an exercise in, in coming back to our own wholeness, coming back to our own sovereignty so that we can more equally, more healthily and more abundantly connect with that aspect of others as well. And, and, and I'm sure in Kelly White in your workshops as well as probably has happened, um, in my workshops it definitely has, where they sign up for one thing, relationship <laughs> course, and then they leave with a whole different thing they have relationship with themselves. That yes. Was like, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes, really talk about self growth. Yes. Yeah, the spirit yeah. knows, they'll always take care of you. All right, Joanne Wilson says, today's my first day of true independence. Wow, oh my God, you, Joanne. So glad to hear this from you both. I'm scared and excited. What can I do to start my independence with more wholeness, balance, and peace? Yes. That's so awesome. So, Congratulations, Joanne. Joanne, scared, excited is one of the most uh, 
uh, abundantly rich places we can be. And that is telling me that you have moved beyond those, those gatekeepers of your, of your subconscious, of your fight, flight, freeze, of your limbic system, of your five senses. And it's like, okay, I get it. And now I'm going to do more. So the, okay. First of all, this whole thing, life, it's a practice. We're here practicing. So kind and gentle and a little bit of lightness for ourselves goes a long way. So that's number one. Anything that happens, a lot of times we'll have a, a predisposition to either blame ourselves or blame someone else. So what we, what we, what we teach and what we, what we help people with is creating that space inside between a reaction and a recognition. So shortening the duration of being in a reaction, however it expresses itself and getting to a place of recognition. Oh, I just, that was a big reaction. I just got dropped into that. Because we do have this capacity of self-awareness and that is a practice in and of itself as well. Right. So it's someone for, else's fault. It's your fault. <laughs> You're the it's, one that's like what can she do right now yes. though? Just like experiencing this new state of being by yourself yeah. and that freedom. Enjoy the heck out of it. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> right. Like, okay. you know, Everything round of applause, scary. pat on the back. Yeah, no, it's scary, take, really. That take scary. take 20 nice, deep, full diaphragmatic breaths. <sighs> Let it all out. If we're starting to work the practice of freedom and, and maintain that, that position, then it becomes about catching ourselves in reactions and playing those mind games, those mental exercises with ourselves of, oop, that was a reaction. Okay. And then there's tools we can use to get ourselves out of a reaction. Breath work is one. Uh, real quick and easy. Easiest way, two short inhales through the nose, one, sh one short but powerful exhale through the mouth. <laughs> Do that five, 10 times, you're not even gonna remember what you're, what you're in resistance about. Um, physically moving, getting out in nature, that's another one. Um, there's one that I guided uh, everyone through in our last uh, episode, Kelly did as well, I believe, and it's called a whole brain or a hookup posture. We're disrupting the electromagnetic field. We're bringing our, our left and right hemispheres back into balance. So we're not in a dominant hemisphere reactive state. Um, creating more observation of life as we live life mm -hmm. is one of the most impactful vehicles I've or impactful tools that I've em employed to really stick at that place of peaceful, balanced freedom more often than not. And then if we get knocked off, we, if we do get dropped in a reaction, then it's the game of recognition. Oh, okay. There it was. Yep. I was in it because recognition is where we get to choice. And we can only change once we've got some choices. If we're in it, we don't feel like we've got a choice. We feel like we're, we're, we're subjected to it. Nothing will ever change. Nothing will ever be different. And if that's our experience, that's literally what we will create for ourselves. Uh, so it's a, a, there's a question here, Kevin, which I, and, and Kelly, which is an interesting one. I, I'd like to hear, hear your response. Mm -hmm. Sonia Callis Mitchum says, uh, but you have to grow together. It can't always be perfect. And it's not. And it's and you're and it's not always going to be growing together. And, and you grow you, in your own way, right? You grow in your own way. And it and it usually isn't, and it, it wasn't for us. Um, right. When we started our journey and really were said yes, said yes to this, I feel like I was a little bit more. And please correct me if I'm wrong, but I was a little bit more in tune with what was going on inside, mm -hmm. and I was just like, you know what. I'm just, I'm just going to, and this was with a, a, the, the doctor who really kind of kicked us off on this whole thing, a Western MD who is also practicing a form of muscle testing and, and subconscious inquiry. Well, I think it would be important to share just like two minutes of the story. Okay. Yeah. Because I think it's impactful yeah. and it kind of kicked us off it's, on this whole journey. Yeah, you say it. You can, good, you say it. Some yeah. good context. Yeah. yeah. So we've been together like 18 years yeah. and, um, we had our, our daughter was about 10 years old at this time and and she used to um she get a little blemish on her face and she'd pick it and then she'd pick it again so it'd become bigger become like a little crater and there were times where she she'd have several and it almost looks like chicken pox or something and she'd come to us and say you know i don't know why i'm picking i don't want to do this i want to stop but i can't and i started doing research on different ways to handle self-harm behavior what does that mean 
uh, well, maybe it's usually looking, it's somebody who wants to take care of themselves. So they do this behavior. So then we were getting her like this little healing salve and she was putting it on her face. And at one point she had three on her legs and four on her face. And I, I have um, my, my friend who saw this emotional kinesiologist that helped her heal her back. And I said, why don't we take her into this doctor? He's 86 year old emotional kinesiologist as well as an MD. And I uh, brought her into the room with me and in seven minutes, he, he's just asking questions through a muscle test to, to get to the bottom of it and figure out what's going on. And he said, okay, is it something going on at school or something going on at home? And her body through her arm has said something that's going on at home. And he said, something going on with you and mom or something going on with you and dad? No, something going on between mom and dad. Yes, her body says. And he, he just keeps asking questions. Is it something they do with their body? Something they do with their mouth? Are they dancing? Are they singing? Something they do with their mouth. Okay, is it arguing? Is it yelling? Is it singing? And her body says arguing. So he said, okay, so mom and dad are arguing. And when mom and dad argue, how do you feel? And I, I, I think she knew this term even mm -hmm. then. She said, I feel anxious. Oh, so he said, God. okay, mom and dad are arguing and you feel anxious and you pick your face. Yep. So he looked at me and he said, and he looked at her and he said, sweetie, is it okay if you go wait in the waiting room and can I have the rest of the session with your mom? <laughs> and I said, Oh, S H I T. I am in trouble. So uh, the rest of the session was about me. And he said, would your husband be willing to come in as well? And we had several relationship sessions together mm -hmm. And this guy has a way to ask your body what's going on to get to the root of what is the real issue. Because we would have said, nothing's wrong. We just argue semantics. It's we, fine. We were so deep in denial that it was like, yeah, we're, we're, we're not even arguing. We're just, dis we're, we're discussing semantics, you know, passionately, which was just, right. we're, you know, lipstick on but a But our daughter showed the symptom. And she, luckily yeah. we were willing to come in and do the work. And there were times, this is where like the subconscious comes into play because he would mm. ask, I would have thought, oh, if anybody's going to leave this relationship, it's me. I'm out of here. If you say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing, I'm out. And the doctor asked my body and my body goes, no, that's not what's going on at all. And he, he would ask me a bunch of questions and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying to guess, but nothing's coming to mind. And finally, when we get to the root of the issue, which was something like, I am scared to death and I feel unlovable, and I, I feel it's dangerous to love me, all of a sudden the doctor looks at me and he goes, what's going on with your face right now, Kelly? And I said, water? And he's, the doctor said, what is that called? And I said, crying? Because I was so disconnected from what my body was trying to say and what I would have, I would have paid a million dollars to say, that's not the real issue, that's not what's going on but my body started crying wow. and I had such a reaction to it that I couldn't dispute the truth that was coming out. Wow. And when I finally acknowledged the feeling that I had of being unlovable or feeling like it's dangerous to love me, then finally we could start healing. Wow. And the wow. truth, the truth came out and I recognized the power of the subconscious to try to keep me safe with all these stories I was creating. And really this coupled with, my friend's back healing was why I went into this work because it was so powerful to get to the root of the real issue to figure this out. And because Kevin was open and willing to go on this journey together, we started working on our marriage and we started healing and the real truth started coming out. And our daughter never picked her skin again after that day. She didn't need to because we healed our marriage. So, and wow. also the seven minute conversation, it was, for her it was the identification because she couldn't put her finger on it. She couldn't identify what was causing this compulsion. And so it was, I don't know, I don't know. And as soon as she identified, it was like, oh, that was it. Oh, it doesn't have anything to do with me. I can let that go. Well, we, we stopped doing what we were doing. Well, we got, yeah, we got, yeah, we we got scared arguing. straight and real quick by this doctor. And it was like, okay, we're on the hot seat. So let's, let's go. And having, having our stuff affect her was a big impact for me as well. Because I was yeah, like, well, you know, you know I, yeah, it's like, oh, there are consequences outside of myself for the way I'm feeling on the inside and for the way I'm acting with, with Kelly. Um, so to, to getting back to the, the question, 
most times growth is not linear and it's also not um, concentric. It's not going to be at the same pace or at the same time or at the same level. And sometimes couples like to do different things and Absolutely. that's okay. Yeah. They have different yeah. hobbies or interests, Yeah, but it, it's really about accepting one another. Accepting one another. And if there is a disagreement, really, if, if one person in the equation has a little bit more awareness or a little bit more perspective to just hold the space, just hold. And so a lot of times in a session, Kelly would be like just really up against the wall, an internal wall and struggling. And I, I was like, I see what it is. I know what it is. And I just, I didn't say a word because it was not my place and it was not my journey. Right. It was, it was a self-realization, self-awareness, self-understanding path that we, we both have been on. Mm -hmm. So it's a challenge when, that when we are in this place, either individually or together, and there's a lot of you language. There's a lot of mm -hmm. finger pointing or accusing or, you make or defensive me feel, mechanisms. Why do you do this? You're yeah. making me do this. Yes. Pointing the finger outwards. And that was really the first step for me is stop pointing fingers right. and just mm -hmm. holding my space. And, and taking, if, taking responsibility, right? Taking yeah. responsibility for, for what I'm bringing to the table. Right. And yeah, and that was, and it's a practice. Again, this is like, it, it didn't happen every time right away. Um, we've been doing this collectively for six years now, something like that. And, and your relationship and, obviously has changed because oh, of Oh, it's, yeah. I mean, in, in the most amazing ways that, that I could have, you know, it, it kind of get got us a little bit more to that childhood, like, you know, when I get married type of thought, you know, that it's going to be perfect and we're going to get along great and everything's going to be amazing. And <laughs> I there's. Have a question for you guys, yeah. Martha Lopez, yeah. Nancy, Kelly, yeah. when I am. Here, yeah, where did. can we get this type of help? My husband and I do the same thing and I feel our daughter is going through stuff too. Yeah. So this would be an, an emotional kinesiologist. There are different type of therapies that do that. I do something similar, but um, instead of trying to diagnose what it is, we just transform what it is. Uh, but we could get you in touch with this particular doctor if you mm -hmm. want. There are uh, body talk types of therapy. Uh, we have, what? what's some others that people can do? Emotion code therapy mm -hmm. is a really good one. The psychological kinesiology, if you wanna find somebody in your area. Mm -hmm. But um, maybe it's you first, Kelly. Your website yeah. will have all that, right? Oh, you oh, yeah, you can first. you can go to yeah. innermostsherpa.com or radicalenlightenment.com where we right. have information about the science behind That's this stuff. Right. And, mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. Go ahead, Mary Renee, Bash has a question here. She oh, says sorry. spouses need to be receptive to this. Mine oh. refuses to go to the doctor. Never mind counseling. Hmm. What do you do in a case like that? One They're person, <laughs> no, one no, person no, can no. create a change because you're in this dis, you're in this dance that can be destructive or it's it's not helpful. But you two are in it together. But right? also, Kelly, you're doing it for yourself, mm -hmm. really. I mean, yes, you but you got to be better for yourself. Oh yeah. my gosh! And sometimes you do. You know, souls grow in different ways, in different times. One soul in relationship might grow, yes. and the other might not. And you've got yeah. to do it for yourself too. A hundred percent. And just one one person gaining new insight, new mm -hmm. skills, and new ways to be in the world can disrupt that pattern because this person will try to pull you back into the old right. games that you play. Right. And right. you can say, no, I'm learning these new things. I'm not doing that anymore. And the person may even try harder than mm -hmm. because they go, this is the time we do this dance. And this is when you say that thing. Right. And then I say this <laughs> thing. And then you say that thing. You're not following the script that right. we've been following for the <laughs> last 20 years. So yeah. even one person right. taking the relationship course, yeah. uh, one person doing the inner work, one person becoming the space holder when you're dropped into a reaction can change the scenario. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's accepting I'm with a partner who has no interest in this type of work. Um, you can ask yourself, is this a deal breaker for me? If it's not, you can say, well, I can work on feeling good within myself. Mm -hmm. right. And sometimes just doing that, James, can transform the whole relationship. Yeah. Because then I'm not saying I need you to be a certain way right. so that I can be happy. Right. I need you to do this thing so that I can enjoy my life. I'm thinking, how can I do it? And then all of a sudden, once I'm taking care of me, he's taking care of him. 
Then it's just the icing or the gravy. And then it's like, then well, we what, start cool taking care of each other. what cool adventure do right. we want to have together? Oh, because I don't right. need you to make me feel good. I feel good. Yeah. I need myself to do that. Jerry and then it's, Pepper says, um, can you, can we perform the emotional kinesis on ourselves? Yes. yes. Um, we actually teach a self muscle testing course. So that would be step one, learning mm -hmm. how to self muscle test, because then you can muscle test yourself and ask yourself questions. Am Maybe I experiencing you throw a little workshop in the workshop? You just oh, yeah. yeah, it's on radical enlightenment.com. It's self muscle testing. So once you can ask yourself questions, you can say, is the symptom I'm experiencing, is it emotional? Is it something that's going on that's physical? Is it the nutrition in my body? Is it my electrical system? So you can start asking yourself what's really going on or is the reason I'm so upset because something my husband said? Right. Is it because of Cheryl at work? Is it that man <laughs> on the freeway? And your body will tell you yes or no. So you can get to the bottom of the issue. Okay. Um, I guess we have. Yeah. Um, Kelly, you want to pick okay, yeah. Oh, yeah. So sure. Tracy it's, says, this is oh. the first time my husband joined me for a Kelly and James I, show. I Perfect timing. So oh, grateful nice. for Kelly and Kevin's insight. Thank you to all four of us. Oh, that's that's great, Thanks, Tracy. Tracy. I'm glad he joined. Aww. Absolutely. It's so right. interesting. So at, at the base of it all, it really, it, you know, Don Miguel Ruiz Jr. has a quote that I love, and it's uh, that our responsibility ends at our fingertips. And I like to add to that how and the responsibility within this within this form within our form is implicit the only person that can affect change of the outputs are the what we contribute to the world is us True. so if we are in a relationship and there's a, a, a one component of that relationship one member of that relationship who's uh controlling it's not killing, you. It's not right. killing you up Right. Right. There, there, it's, there's control or there's scarcity or there's fear or there's resistance. Any, we can't fight it because any, what, we, what you resist persists. So if you're resistant to resistance, that's just creating more resistance. Right. So it's, ex, it's just accepting, accepting what is. exactly where they're at. And it's not necessarily exacting, exact, sorry, it's not exactly accepting who they are because a lot of these, um, what we would interpret potentially as negative behaviors or negative expressions, are conditioned and programmed within this form as safety, again, safety at all costs, safety, planning, and protection. That's this operating system's modus operandi. It's its only operating uh, imperative. Um, Kevin, so, let, me interrupt, let me interrupt you because I'm running please. out of time here, but a couple yes. of things. Um, I'm curious myself too. So doing two day workshop, right? It'll be a Saturday and Sunday, is that right? For us, we're doing six weeks. So, oh, sorry. Tell us more about the workshop and how people can reach you and so forth, please. Six week practice series. Six uh, we weeks, meet. everybody. Six uh -huh. weeks. So it's it's uh, information and practice for a week. So the the practice video, the inform information video is delivered to the inbox. You you go at your own pace. You watch at your own right. time because we have people all around yep. the world at different times. So that you can watch the video, and then once a week we'll get together for live Q and A. Support. To answer real questions that are coming yep. in. What's what's going on in your life? What's happening that we can help out with? If you can't be present for that, you could submit a question and we'll answer it and we'll record all those videos and send those out to everybody. So it's live support every week, a new topic every mm -hmm. week. And then continuing and, uh, support during the week yeah. in our in our private practice group that everybody's going to have access to who takes the course. And it's it's a it's an add it's an additive approach. So we we start with a foundation the first week, and then we add another. So we have a practice for the first week, and then we add a practice for the second week, and then we add perspective and practice for the third week. And so by the end of the six week course, you leave with a complete tool set of inside out relationship transformation functions, relationship transformation tools. How to one get more you know get our hands back on the wheel of this so that we can actually communicate more consciously, more effectively, more compassionately with any relationship that we've got. And, and one thing I noticed, which at my, my school, which has happened in yours, of course, which I think is incredible, is because these people have been through the, these six weeks, it brings you together. So there's a yeah. mindset that yeah. you have other people that belong in the same space because it's a community. You're, you're yeah. forming a community with the same mind, like-minded yeah. people. Going through a lot of similar Iceland. things and yeah, realizing yeah. you're not alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cu couples, couples have grown together, and couples of couples have have grown together and played off of each other. Especially in the in the support uh, in the online support group, where it's really a more of a a collaborative. 
Um, and it's, you know, everybody's bringing their experiences to the table and it's all valid, it's all helpful. And so the more perspective we can offer, the more, um, the more we can share kind of our, our unique perspective and things that have worked for us, the more that everybody grows and evolves together. Well, you know, I, I mean, I've been around a long time, 40 years. I don't mean to sound weird about it, but I've been to Brazil. I've been some incredible people, some healers and so forth, and in this world in the United States. But you two, <laughs> my life has changed because of you two, and I just want to share oh, it with everybody. Kelly, I can know. say the same thing. I've sent many people to both of you, and they all come back have with life-changing experiences. Thank you. It's it's uh, thank you. So, thank you guys said, for the work you do. No, thank you Very both much. as well. I mean, for 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 the space and for the opportunity, and also for everything you've been doing your entire careers. Well, thank you, and, and anybody out there who's not watching, friends of yours, everybody who you think to help, please send them to the website. Mm -hmm. so really yes, help. please. Yeah, We're, we have a real good special going on right mm -hmm. now too, because the investment is a two for one. So if you oh, want to take it. That. You can take it with your mom, you can take it with your sibling, you can take it with your spouse or friend. Partner. And yeah. we also have $100 off for the next couple of days until September 1st. So we so have an ultra super deal right now, eraticalenlightenment.com. And you can transform the way you interact with so many people in your life. Yeah. So we're excited. Like what you're saying about astrology, Kelly. Now's yeah. the time to change. Now's the time. This is the yeah. time. This Perfect. is the time to become who you are to, to, to become. I love that. Divine timing. Yeah. Perfect. Well, yeah. thanks everybody so thank much. You thank, you, much. Thank, thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kelly. Thank, thank you, Jay. Thank you thanks, thank Renee. You. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Renee. Thanks, we'll see you guys. Next time thanks, tomorrow. everybody, for tuning in. Bye. Okay. Bye, everyone. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Prague and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. The James and Kelly Show.